Welcome, pups. I haven't prepared the circle tonight, because we're doing a different kind of work. Gird your loins, loves. We're going into battle against someone who has all the money and all the power. We're going to fight the man. But before we do, I have to ask you a question. Do you trust your boss? A lot of you probably said no. You saw the question in the title and you're like, fuck no, I don't trust my boss. And while you'd be correct not to trust your bosses, today I'm here to talk about some of the ways you do trust your boss. And you absolutely shouldn't. Because today, I'm here to talk about the reality of wage theft. And not in the leftist sense of wages or theft, but in the legal sense of wage theft as a thing that happens in the world where even your wages themselves are stolen from you by your employer. Wage theft is an enormous problem. And it's one of the evils that keep the gears of the system greased. According to Kim Bobo, author of Wage Theft in America, Why Millions of Workers Are Not Getting Paid and What We Can Do About It, and co-director of the Virginia Interfaith Center for Public Policy in the United States, simply not paying overtime, only one form of wage theft accounts for at least $19 billion a year of wage theft, more than 10 times the amount that's stolen through burglary, larceny, or auto theft, which are themselves about 10 times the amount stolen in armed robbery. Why is it such a huge problem? Well, for a number of reasons. People with power will take advantage of those without. Wage theft is one of the ways they'll do it. Wage theft affects immigrants and other marginalized people at higher rates than the majoritized people. Okay, but what is it? Wage theft is exactly what the name implies. Theft of wages. This can be done a number of ways, and we're going to talk about them. But let's get one thing straight here. When I say that wage theft keeps the gears greased, I mean it. Middlesex University and Trust reported that three billion pounds per year in unpaid holiday pay and wages were being stolen from millions of workers in the UK, and suggested that wage theft was a deliberate tactic used to increase profits. I'm not here to suggest that. I'm here to tell you it absolutely is a deliberate act. Like I said, it can happen in a number of ways. The most common way is underreporting of hours worked. Employers, for any number of reasons, will adjust employees' hours worked in a pay period and then pay based on the adjusted hours. I've had this happen multiple times. In one case, my hours and others as well were being reduced so that my supervisor could inflate his own timesheet by those amounts. This resulted in hundreds of dollars in lost wages a month from just myself, let alone everyone else he did it to. Another way that wage theft can occur is denial of holiday pay or paid leave. Now, I've not experienced this form of wage theft myself, mainly due to holiday pay and paid leave not being benefits I had in my jobs. But if your job is supposed to pay holiday pay and it doesn't, that isn't just a little mistake. That's theft. You aren't not getting something extra. You're having something that is rightfully yours taken from you. That's theft. In fact, I currently work for a company that has a history of this exact form of wage theft, so there's a very good chance that I haven't experienced this form of wage theft myself statement won't be true for much longer. Then there's tip theft. This one's harder to track. If you work at one of the jobs where your pay is supplemented by tips, and usually these jobs pay sub-minimum wage, then you have to be especially wary of this. This is absolutely a thing I've experienced in the past, and it's among the vilest things an employer can do to an employee. And the next form of wage theft after tip theft is far sneakier. Off-the-clock labor. Employers may require you to do job-related activities before or after your shift. My previous employer had employees put up signs in nearby neighborhoods advertising a restaurant, had us do spot cleaning and other light duties when off-the-clock, and by other means extracted labor from us when we weren't being paid for it. The next form of wage theft is harder to defend, but all of these are indefensible. Wage underpayment. Different from time theft, wage underpayment is when, for one reason or another, reason or another, your hourly wage or weekly, monthly, or annual salary is less than you were contracted for. This is not quite the same as a pay cut, though your thieving employer may describe it as one. The crucial difference between a pay cut and a wage underpayment, however, is the phrase, than you were contracted for. Cutting someone's pay without informing them is a breach of contract, and that makes it a form of wage theft. If they do announce a pay cut to you, 
before it is enacted. It's not legally wage theft, but still something to watch out for. The final one on this list is a rarer one, deduction theft. Making an employee pay for losses or expenses incurred by them is a protected legal action as long as it doesn't reduce their wages below minimum wage. However, invoking those deductions for something the employee is not responsible or liable for is a form of theft. That makes around half a dozen ways employers are stealing billions from the people they are already exploiting, and that multi-billion dollar graft is the thing that companies are built from. Oh well, system sucks, what are you going to do about it? Well, what are you going to do about it? And more importantly, do you trust your employer? After everything I've told you, do you trust your employer? If this happens to you, do you trust your employer? If so, I guess you can just talk to them, see what that gets you. But if not, you need to arm yourself for the fight ahead. And I'm here to provide you with the keys to the armory. Now, the first weapon in your arsenal is the knowledge of what can be done to you. You have that now. Treasure it. It's like a gambus on it. It won't save your life on its own, but it will absolutely provide a foundation for the armor to go atop of. The second weapon is the ability to recognize when it's being done to you. So let's get that for you now. Since there are multiple avenues of attack, you're going to need multiple tools to deal with this, and we're going to start with time theft. Do you own a smartphone? If not, do you have a pen and notebook? All right. This is what you do. On your smartphone, you can go to sheets.google.com. If you're using the pen and paper route, you'll want a pocket-sized spiral notebook for convenience. Now, while the notebook people are still waiting, you have one more step. You will need to create a new spreadsheet, call it Timesheet. Notebook people, take out your notebook and pen and, pen and draw vertical lines down the page. You're going to want four lines as straight as you can make them. Now you have a spreadsheet. Now, both phone and notebook people, you're going to label your columns. First column is date, second is clock in, third is clock out, final one is memo. That's it. Now, whenever you clock in or clock out, you write these exact same time and date in their spreadsheet. Do you do two different types of work for two different pay rates? Well, that's what the memo field is for. If you like, I've linked to a template in the description. You can save a copy of that and just use it instead of making a new one. Keep that timesheet up religiously. Clock in, write your timesheet in your spreadsheet. Do the same when you clock out. Every single time. Now, at the time I wrote this script, I was looking directly at the timesheet I kept for my second security job from December of 2012. Kept it because the first security job I had was the one that stole hours from me. At the time, I was working security at the Texas Workforce Commission. More on them later. I prefer the Google Docs method to the physical copy because your employer can't confiscate Google from you, nor can you lose it yourself. Even if they take your phone or you lose it, the timesheet will still be on Google's servers for you to access from any place. I've gone through three phones since that timesheet from 2012. Public libraries have internet access, and if you have a wage claim, the ability to show your hours will be invaluable. You're not done yet, though. I recommend creating a new spreadsheet for every pay period. If you're using the Google Sheets method, you can save the blank version as a template, or just refer back to my template and create duplicates with the pay period listed in the name. When your paycheck comes, compare your copy to the pay stub. Don't have a pay stub? In all but a few states in the U.S., your employer is required to give you one with your check. If you have direct deposit, you may be receiving the pay stub electronically. Check your email. If you still don't have it, ask your employer to provide you with one. If they were, won't, I refer you back to my earlier statement. In all but a few states in the U.S., your employer is required to give you a pay stub. I'm going to reinforce that by saying, if your employer won't give you a pay stub, even if it's not required, you're going to want to find a, a better job because they're hiding something. If the hours in your pay stub match, everything else should be fine. If they don't, you now know that you've been a victim of wage theft. And the clock is ticking. Now, we'll address that part later. For holiday pay or leave, you'll still need that pay stub because holiday pay 
Well, it's usually double the rate of your normal pay, it may be time and a half. Your pay stub should list all holiday hours as a separate line item with the holiday pay as the pay rate for those hours. If they're lumped in with your regular hours and you have holiday pay as a benefit for your employer, you're being robbed. Literally, a theft is being committed against you. Tip theft is harder to track or prove. If you work at a job with communal tips where all employees pool and then split their tips, it may be impossible. If not, keep your tips neatly sorted, stacked, faced, sorted by denomination. Count them at intervals. This one is all about literally keeping an eye on your money. Electronic tips through the customer's chat are the best avenue of exploitation, so make sure to keep a physical tally, notebook or Google Sheets, of those as well. But beyond that, I can't really offer you advice on how to track this one. Go with what suits you best, but absolutely keep track of your tips. As tough as this one is to track, the next one is a lot harder to deal with because it requires being rude. Off-the-clock labor. This takes willpower. It takes courage. This isn't a thing that you can track. It's a thing you have to prevent. Good rule of thumb for anything work-related, and in fact the law, is if your boss requires you to be somewhere or do something, the law requires them to pay you for it. That's it. Does your boss require everyone to be on hand for a meeting, even if it's not their shift? Clock in. Put it in your spreadsheet. Track that shit. Never, ever, ever do work off the clock. Don't help them steal from you. Come on now. If your employer tells you to clock out when you've clocked in, ask them straight up if you can leave. If they say no, do not clock out. If you're required to be there, they're required to pay you. That is what a job is. That's why this one's so tough. You have to be able to stand up to a person who seemingly has all the power and remind them that there's one power you have that they don't. You control you. You decide where you are. And if they don't pay you to be somewhere, you can decide not to be there. And you absolutely should. The final two items on our list are underpayment and deductions. And One Defense covers both of those. Here's where your timesheet and your pay stub come in handy again. On your pay stub, if you have it, your hourly wage should be listed. Does it match what you've agreed to? Multiply it by your total hours. Does that match your gross pay on your pay stub? Once you subtract any deductions, which should also be listed on your pay stub, you see why I said you got to get a pay stub. You should have your net pay, or the actual amount of your paycheck. All of that should match what you have in your timesheet that you've written down. And once you've gotten that first check with those numbers and everything adds up correctly, you can use them to prepare yourself for the future. If your tax is being withheld for you, all you have to do is divide that amount by the gross pay, not the other way around, to get the percentage withheld. That should be consistent between checks. Once you have those numbers from either doing the math or getting them from the IRS itself, they have an online withholding estimator, you can apply that math to the hours on your personal timesheet and get what your paycheck should be before you see it. If it's not that, you've got a problem, and it's either the amount being paid per hour or it's the amount deducted. Again, this is where you'll need that pay stub from your employer. Check your stub. You should see both of those numbers on there. Look for any errors. They're not errors, it's theft. So what do you do if you're a victim of wage theft? How do you address that grievance? Smash everything and take what you want. Wait, no, 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 not that. Not that. Hang on, um, wage claims. Wage claims are exactly that. It's a civil process through a government agency to reclaim wages that you are owed. Again, I'll be using my home state of Texas as the example, but the process and rights you have may vary depending on where you live. In the state of Texas, you file a wage claim with the Texas Workforce Commission. I told you I'd be getting back to them eventually. You'll need to provide your own legal information, name, social security account number, or uh, ITIN, um, your address, your employer's information, specifically the name of the company, and their address, which you should be able to get from any of your pay stubs. And you will need to provide the time and date of the, or the date range, excuse me, of the pay dispute and the hours worked. 
The deadline for this with the Texas Workforce Commission is six months from the date of your paycheck. Do not, I repeat, do not delay your wage claim just because your boss says they'll take care of it. They're running out the clock. I fell for that once myself. File the claim. While it's illegal for your employer to retaliate against you for this claim, we all know that's unlikely to affect their behavior. So, your next steps are to seek the aid of a labor rights organization. A union would be best because they're in a position to fight for you. You'll also probably want a lawyer. Now, I can't promise results from all this, but I can promise that if you don't prepare to defend yourself from wage theft, the only result you'll get is to be a victim of it sooner or later. Good luck, everyone, and blessed be. At the time, I was working security at the Texas Workforce Commission, and I just leaned off camera, so let's just fix that. <clears throat> ah. In one case, my hours and others as well were being reduced so that my supervisor, the Okay, for rewinding. And one defense covers both of those. Here's where your timesheet and your pay stub come in handy again. And now I have to do that sentence over. Thank you, phone. Was that Anna texting me telling me to shut up? No, that was Netflix telling me that... <gasps> oh, it's tomorrow. Keep on season three. Yeah.